video. I'm really excited to share this piece with you. My name is Sophie McPike and I'm an artist. I'm based in Melbourne, Australia and I love scribbling, painting, colours, throwing colours around sketchbook stuff. I really just have a very good time with my art practice. Um, today I'll be painting this piece titled Floralagia and I hope you enjoy the video. tell you about the mediums I'm using for this piece. So this painting is done on a 300 GSM watercolor paper made out of cotton. I think it's a Fabriano brand and I used as a base the acrylic gouache by Holbein, one of the orange ones, um, and watered it down and used it as a base layer. I really love a bright vibrant color as a base layer for my watercolors because it brings like this glow from within and it's always lovely you might not ever see the orange at the end of the day but the glow that you get peeking through little gaps of paint is just lovely and yeah I just I'm not a fan of seeing the blank white page usually so having a base like that really helps um, and these are a bunch of Neo Color 2 pastels, which I then just like chopped into little bits and added water in these little blank watercolor pans. It's as simple as that. It's just uh, Neo Color 2s with water added to them. And I really like painting with them. I really like the colors. I like how like creamy, pastel-y they are. And the brushes I use. It's just a pack that I got, you know those really cheap ones that come in a pack of like 20? I found it at the op shop slash thrift store and they work great. I'm happy with them. <laughs> Over the past few years, I have been obsessed with like quilt patterns, tile patterns, mainly quilt vibes. And I've been doing it in a lot of paintings over the years and it's just something I keep coming back to. It's like a comfort style to do. I just I just love a good quilt. They're so comforting to me. They're, they remind me of childhood, the coziness of my mum's handmade quilts, you know. It's really nice. So I, I love coming back to them. I love the colors. It's also a really fun way to play with color palettes. And I love playing with color palettes. I'm obsessed with colors, trying to find interesting color palettes, what sings, what doesn't sing, what feels weird but works. That's one of my favorite. <laughs> it was one of my favorite hobbies. So like putting all these patterns together for to create um, an illustrated quilt is like the best of all the things. This piece has a little bit of a story and it has a bit of history as well in my development of my illustrated world. I never really have original characters, like I don't have a recurring specific character in my work. I feel like they're always kind of me in a way. You know, an artist always, always kind of draws themselves or draws their, their life the embodiment of who they are and that sort of thing. Uh, it's like a journal. Well, that's how I do it anyway. So a lot of the characters are like me, even if they don't necessarily look like me, there's elements of them that are me. And this is a character that I have been drawing on and off for a long time, but she comes in different forms. 
but she is always drawing flowers, uh, documenting flowers in her sketchbook and usually is sitting outside on a rug. Yeah, I've got multiple old sketchbooks from years back with little drawings of this character sitting on a blanket draw drawing flowers. And I always seem to come back to her, but I never really thought about it before now, before having to sit down and do her voiceover. I'm, you know that I never plan my voiceovers, so th these memories are just coming to me right now. I did a really cute uh, botanist flower recording character uh, last year or the year before for a Patreon reward. She's one of my favorites. I'll show it. I'll show it to you here. Um, so yeah, same same world, same character really. Um, but again, they don't necessarily have all the same physical attributes as each other. Anyway, so she is a botanical collector of flower illustrations. Let me just pedal back a sec. I was um, I was looking through an old journal recently from when I was about 19 years old and I had the word Floralagia written really big in one of the first pages of my journal and I had taken that word with me through a lot of my journals. Um, you, I, use my, I use my journals as like a dump for like a brain dump place for artistic ideas, poetic ideas, also like some life happenings and stuff like that and memories and things like that. It's, it's not necessarily a, on this day I did this, on this day I did that. It's usually just like a collage of life and thoughts and blobs and stuff. So anyway, the word Floralagia or Floralagium has traveled with me through many of my journals and I just love the meaning behind it. And let me just tell you what that is. So I looked up just now really quick the Royal Botanic Garden of Sydney website botanicalgardens.org.au and here's their def definition the word floralagium literally a gathering of flowers was first used in 1590 to describe a publication that focused on the beauty of the plants rather than their medicinal value Floralagia flourished from the 17th century to the late 19th century and they portrayed collections of rare and exotic plants. This is, yeah, this is definitely an, an idea I love. As someone who is a massive introvert and loves spending time with animals and nature and thinking about those things rather than other people, I see myself as a bit of a collector of flowers, floralagia, and to like gather flowers in my own way in my sketchbook and in my artwork. So I feel like a bit of a floralagia artist sometimes. <laughs> I'm also obsessed with medieval stuff. I freaking love medieval stuff. Um, I've never talked about that publicly on internet before, but I really love medieval stuff um, and this was definitely a word that featured or, or became popular or was first used I don't know what I'm talking about during medieval times yeah there's uh, there's a lot of medieval books that are dedicated to ornamental flower flowers rather than medicinal flowers and stuff like that so I, I love that stuff so much I've got medieval flower tattoos on me and all that kind of stuff so yeah that's where this piece sprang from I guess from the just looking back at my old journals being triggered in the memory of this word floralagia and the yeah the history of it and that sort of thing I won't go into too much more about the history of the word you can look that up if you like but um, yeah, it's dreamy to me. It's just a dreamy theme and then paired with quilts and the coziness of quilts and then also paired with going painting en plein air, which is painting outside and paired with sketchbook and colors and drawing and recording what you see 
and I love that I was able to make these flowers kind of special and abstract because you know originally in in old literature and old botanical illustrations um, the flowers were recorded for their beauty and their exoticism rather than medicinal purposes so I liked that this illustration shows these really wild and wonderful interesting pinwheel looking quilt looking flowers um it was really fun to design i had a i've been doing all these fun sketchbook drawings or sketchbook paintings lately where i will just start putting colors down and blocking them in and stuff like that you kind of got a glimpse of it a little bit um, at the beginning of this video in my sketchbook but yeah I've been doing a lot of that kind of stuff in it it's been really fun and I can't stop and I won't stop <laughs> illustrations which tell interesting stories um, which mean something to the illustrator or the writer or whatever is really important it's really important to me to be able to tell stories that mean something to me that are authentic to me and my life um, I used to I used to go to the library and try and find books about medieval language um, and medieval dictionaries and stuff like that and pick out really interesting words and create stories about them. I definitely do less of that these days, mainly because the internet is just so there all the time and I get so distracted by social media and stuff like that. I, I'm so grateful that I kept so many journals when I was uh, a teenager and in my early 20s before uh, I'm kind of showing my age now am I outing myself here but yeah before internet and social media was the massive thing um, and before it became like my job I felt like I was more able to I don't know blob around and make my own little stories and poetic stories and I had more patience for it and stuff and it's really nice being able to go back and look at all that old stuff and take my old ideas that are just sitting there living quietly in these books, being able to take them and give them a life now when I might not have had the skills or the confidence or the motivation to do so back then. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I'm, I'm proud of myself for keeping lots of books, lots of sketchbooks, lots of journals over the years because I feel like I have a wealth of ideas and stories within them that I can bring to life again or rework now as, um, as an adult who um, I feel like I know myself better. I know what I like. I care less what other people think. Yeah. As I was painting this, I was definitely coming up with story ideas for this character and um, where does she go? What does she do with her drawings? Has she traveled far? You know, all the things. And I'm really excited about exploring this character some more. Uh, yeah, more, more deeply. Even though she has existed through different iterations throughout my illustration portfolio it's yeah it's nice to finally do an illustration where she really seems like something like it really feels like a story that I can move with that I can take and do something interesting with one day I don't know maybe 
you will see a little book one day. Who knows, that would be a dream. <laughs> Also, isn't it just lovely setting out a big quilt in the middle of a flower field and drawing flowers all day? Don't you just want to do that? That's all I want to do with my life. <laughs> that would be perfect. I would be so happy. And a dog. I need a dog there with me, of course. And a cup of tea. <laughs> So this piece is going to be this month's Patreon reward. You will get a double sided mini print. On one side is the finished artwork and on the back is a collection of sketches from my sketchbook which led me to the final artwork. And you also get a really lovely vinyl sticker, 10 out of 10 sticker. <laughs> so if you sign up within this month, within November 2023, you can get those goodies and I'm really looking forward to sending them out. Thank you thank you so much for watching i hope you like the final piece i know i do i'm really excited by it i had a lot of fun with the colors and all the different shapes and just like plodding away on it and having a nice time wanted to say a really big flourishingly flowerful love thank you to my patrons you are so wonderful i adore you i adore you i adore you Thanks for, thanks for watching everyone and I will see you in the next video. Okay, toodaloo, bye.